part two. We've been working on the hub that this wheel's going to mount onto, and this bit of a hanger here. Uh, what isn't on the diagram is the rear disc brake that's got to fit inside this wheel as well. So I'm going to uh, carry on with working on with that before we then start marking out the tube and welding that up. My rear brake needs to fit on the hub, but the um, the mount for it is too small. So I'm going to replace it with my own mount that I'm making out of this piece of aluminium. So this is my next job, I've got to drill this out and uh, make some mounting holes. It's quite thick aluminium, I'm hoping it's going to be man enough to uh, stop that big back wheel, but we'll find out I suppose. This is the best way I have of cutting holes in aluminium. I've drilled some holes in here so I can mount that on there. I'm waiting for some longer bolts to come through the posts so they're going to stick through a little bit longer and I'm going to put some 6mm nuts just to space this off make just to make sure that the caliper has got room to go around and grip this. So what I've got to do next is take these off so we can get the disc off. That's what uh, our friend the grinder's for. We're just going to take the heads off of this and then hopefully they will pop out. So now I'm hoping I can just drift those out with a punch. So here's the hub with my new rotor hub mounted. Now the tricky bit is I've got to try and put that on there and work out where all these mounting holes have got to go with that nicely centered because I don't want it sort of running out like that. That's a bit of an exaggeration. So uh, I've got to try and think of a way of working out how far these should be from the center. I'll measure the distance, probably put it on the hub and I'm thinking I might be able to measure it out and then spin it on the hub and scribe a line. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I've managed to scribe this line by rotating it with a scriber and I think that should help me get this centralized. So I've marked my first hole, I'm going to start drilling and fixing. So that's the disc mounted on the hub and I think I've got an acceptable level of run out. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off and just make this into a circle and uh, clean this up a little bit. So quickly assembled and cleaned up. That's what the hub will look like with the disc brake on it. I then need to sort of weld a bracket on here so that we can mount the caliper and that'll be over probably this side or that side. I can move it around. I won't fix it yet because I need to see whether I'm going to put the battery packs in the wheel and uh, I mean need to put that caliper tucked it out just out of the way there somewhere. So that's the disc brake mount uh, bolted on and the disc bolted onto that and this is what it looks like. So we can now bolt the wheel on to this and see how low that's going to hang in the wheel. There we have the hub and the disc mounted on the wheel. That's what it looks like from this side. So now I'm going to just pop the mount on there and we're going to start thinking about the frame. This is where I propose to start working on the frame. I needed a bit of a longer bench. So as you can see, I managed to get the wheel up and uh, we're going to build it along this wall if we can. Now my original plan was to use a tube bender or in actual fact, a pipe bender that I've got here and this pipe that I've got uh, in stock, so to speak. But as you can see, it's pretty thick walled stuff, which is the only stuff this would bend successfully because being a pipe bender, it will actually kink tube when I try and bend it. However, a good friend of mine, Mr. Matthews, gave me this galvanized pipe, which locks in a wall, but plenty strong enough. Um, I can clean the galvanize off it to clean it, to uh, weld it. 
But my issue is uh, the bends, although they're great and they're uh, they're nice and done, they're just a little bit past 90. So I'm going to give it a go and see what I can do with it and uh, see whether I can get the right shapes out of it. Right, okay, so I think we're ready to weld some tube. Um, here's my two bits, I've cleaned them up. Try to get the galvanise off them, ground it all off. I've also drilled some spot welds, holes, holes in here. So what I'm going to do first is just fill these holes and just tack it in. So that's the plan. I've had a quick uh, test with a piece of scrap, just to see if I've got my welder roundabout right. And it doesn't weld too badly, actually. So. I'm just going to fill a couple of these first, I'm not going to go too mad in case I get all my angles wrong and I've got to undo it but eventually I'm going to use all of these all the way around to fix it and then I'll seam weld this as well and then grind it all flat and fill it so hopefully it looks like one piece of tube So I think a couple of those just to hold it in place whilst I'm getting everything lined up and then we can come back and weld it all later I think that's it's pretty strong. Right, bit of a crucial stage. Um, I'm trying to get this tube to take on the right sort of bends. Uh, these bends are way too uh, wide and open to be able to do what I want to do here. So I've drawn um, a picture on this bit of paper, which denotes the centre line of the wheel. Uh, this then shows where. This bit of tube sits on the bracket and then what I've got to do is get this to come round and then it's sort of, sort of got to flow and that's the centre line of what the uh, chopper will be. So I've got to do something fairly arty with these bends now and uh, cut them across so that I can bring the one round so it flows into the other. I'd say for a first cut that went pretty good. So. Um, it's a little bit far over this way, off that centre line, but what I'm going to do now is just trim these up, close it together, bring that whole thing over so it stays parallel down the line, and I think then we've got our shape. I'm also going to try and make a little insert for it, so I can do the same as what I've done here, spot weld it in, give it a little bit of extra rigidity and strength, but I need to see if I can keep this tube with a hole through it because I intend to run all the cables from up the front along through the tube and then out because I've still got every intention of putting the, uh, if this is where the back wheel is going to be, putting the batteries inside the back wheel. Okay, same principle as the last one. Uh, I've made a little insert and I've drilled some holes and we're just going to spot weld those holes. So there's a quick mock-up of how it should look. Uh, I've got to clean all the welds up in bits and pieces. We can hide all that with a bit of filler and some paint. I've uh, set the wheel hub mount, uh, set it all up in my little jig that I've got over there, and uh, the collar that I put inside where the tube locates. I'm just going to spot weld that. I've spot welded it on this side, put a blob of weld on. So, next thing is spot weld this and then when I see my weld all the way around the outside. Right, okay, I've welded it in place. I put a couple of little webs on it just to make sure that it can't tear off uh, with all that weight of that wheel and um, it being pulled through this bar. So the next thing is we're gonna pop it into the hub and see if it's still straight, parallel with the uh, edge of the tire. And then we're gonna apply a bit of weight on it and see whether it's up to the job. Oh, look at that then. Yeah. All right. Yeah, don't go too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That feels all right, don't it? Well, I don't know how much weight was on my hands compared to my feet. Oh, all of it. But, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, again, or all good? No, I think that'll be uh, plenty enough for me. 